Hi, I'm Steve DeSante, founder of Impact You, and today I'm joined by Alexandra Astrow, founder of Why Whisper Collective, a strategy and marketing for Impact Company. How are you, Alex? I'm doing well today. How Good are to you? Good to see you. Great, thanks. So, your company is run primarily by women. It's women run. Yes. Is that correct? Why is that important to you? Um, so I think what we need to recognize in the business world is though women have come a long way, we are still very much underrepresented and not protected in the workforce. So mm -hmm. there are actually more CEOs named David than there are uh, women CEOs. And uh, only 5% of CEOs in the S&P 500 are women, 0.4% of which are women of color. So clearly we have a discrepancy on how they're being represented. Also, women are making, I think it's 79 cents on the dollar still, hasn't gone up since 2000. And then we also have an issue in family leave policies, which are primarily affecting women since they're the ones carrying the baby. Um, if we don't have mandatory family leave and a woman can't take off, there's a big economic risk to her family and to mm. her. Um, on top of that, we have a significant stigma around breastfeeding in the workplace, and most workplaces are not providing clean, private spaces and time to breastfeed in the workplace. So when it comes to starting a company as a woman, I was primarily motivated because I wanted to create a work environment that worked for me in whatever stage of life I was in, and I also wanted to be in a position where I could influence other leaders to change their hiring policies, their family leave policies, and really take care of women in the workforce. Fantastic. That's great. Our board, by the way, is three women and three men, which That's really awesome. helps. It know. also shows that uh, there's a lot of data around the fact that um, having a more diverse board and leadership um, and having more women is actually much better for your bottom line. You perform better. I can absolutely concur on that. That's for sure. So Why Whisper Collective is a B Corp. Yep. We've been trying to get to be B Corp status for a few years now. Awesome. We're close. Um, why would you become a B Corp? How does that help drive your business? What is it about being a B Corp? Most people don't even know what a B Corp is. Yeah, so let's see. When I went out on my own, I at first thought that nonprofit was the only way to create an impact. Um, I was disillusioned by businesses that were using uh, social responsibility in the wrong way. And as I started educating myself and learning about social enterprises and ultimately learning about B Corps, certified B Corps, I really started recognizing what an opportunity it was for me as, a, as an individual and as a company to grow and to start being more impactful and be surrounded by a community of individuals and businesses that had the same values that I did, which we know is sometimes hard to find, right? Yeah. Um, so it was a dream. I didn't know if it would be possible, but this past year we took our B Corp assessment. Um, so for those that don't know, a B Corp certification is essentially like a fair trade certification, or organic certification that says that you take into account all of your stakeholders, your, your com the surrounding community, the people that you might donate to, your employees, your products, everything basically reflects your values. Mm. Um, so we took the assessment. It, it's a pretty lengthy assessment that goes into every aspect of your operations and your hiring. Yeah. Uh, then you have an interview. And then you are certified for two years with a fee, and it has to be recertified every two years. Have you done the recertification yet? No, we are okay. a year in. So cross our fingers. Hopefully we can improve our score or stay the same. I don't want to drop anything. Yeah, I found that process enlightening because it's it so made cool. you think about things you didn't think about before, right? The it's, things you didn't know you yeah. didn't know. And they're really an empowering organization. It's run by a nonprofit called B-Lab. Um, and I'd say they're very empowering because there's no shame about what you don't know. And there's mm. no shame about you know, it's not trying to say like, oh, you only donate 1% of your profits, you should be doing 10%. <laughs> that's, they really want to build business in a way that's sustainable with impact. So do what you can with what you have now, but mm. keep trying to do better. And let's all talk amongst ourselves and let's all keep educating ourselves. We don't even claim to have all the answers type thing. Um, and for me, I'd say that really was, it empowered me to try and think more creatively. Alex, why should companies and financial advisors focus on impact and where should they start? So the corporate landscape is rapidly, rapidly changing. Um, today, I think it's something like 64% of uh, CEOs that say CSR is core to their entire business, not just one particular department. Mm. It's not siloed anymore. Um, and I think the reasons, there's, there's a variety of them. So for one, personal motivations. A lot more people are recognizing that they want to do good in the world and that business is an avenue for doing it. Um, there is the very fun, 
addressing a conflict. So <laughs> basically your business has been associated with something bad and you want to fix that and social responsibility is a strong way to do that. Um, and then there's what's happening with consumers and employees. So right now 91% of consumers uh, would actually have a positive perception of a company that is supporting social or environmental causes. Mm. So that's a huge percentage. Um, and th about the same amount would actually switch to a cause branded product if the quality and the price are the same. And 51% would pay more. So here we have a huge opportunity for profit to drive revenue to attract new consumers all by saying I am an impactful individual, I'm an impactful business, I support social and environmental issues. Um, on the other hand, our workforce is changing, right? We have really, we have low retention rates in a lot of industries. We have high turnover rates. Um, though it's very costly to train people, the lost knowledge in between employees is pretty extensive. What can you do to engage that workforce? And six in 10 millennials, which is a big portion of our workforce right now, are looking for purpose at work. Um, so essentially, I look at impact as a way to not only solve what we're internally trying to do, in our lives, but to also attract new consumers, build loyalty amongst consumers, attract and retain talent. Um, and that's why I think it's really important for businesses to be recognizing that this is actually for their bottom line. It's not just like a feel good fluffy thing you're putting on. So what are some of the most difficult obstacles to overcome when a company decides it wants to become more impactful and how do you overcome them? How do you do that? As with pretty much everything, I think capacity is your biggest issue always. Do you have the people that are willing to spend the time and energy um, and potentially financial resources to make this happen. So um, we work with them to overcome that by, by coming in and helping them with the research, by helping them figure out how they're going to address a problem um, and identifying the people within their company that can take on specific responsibilities so that this is sustainable in the long run. Um, other areas that can be particularly difficult are when leadership have differing views. So whether that's differing views over implementing the social responsibility initiative to begin with or mm -hmm. differing views about what problem they want to solve or how they want to go about solving it, it's really important to foster a very, a very trusted environment and foster those conversations um, so that you can reach consensus. And it ultimately, again, it comes down to if you're not reaching consensus and you just launch something, it's not sustainable within the organization. And you really want to be focusing on starting something that stays throughout the lifetime of your company and grows with the growth of your company. Um, other issues, financial considerations. Some are like, I can't do anything impactful, I don't have enough profit to donate. Great, let's go have an employee volunteer day. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just getting creative and recognizing there are so many ways you can create an impact and, and going for it.